All right. So good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining in. This is the third episode of my podcast series that I started last month. The intent of this podcast series is basically to help the young engineers and early in career people who are looking to pivot their profession into different roles like sales, marketing, product marketing, or a or a product manager role. And today, my guest is David Leach. He is a product marketing manager at Cisco. David and I worked together uh, for quite a long time. We were part of another company which was acquired by Cisco later on and um, we share a lot of common goals from that perspective so I'm gonna pass my ball to David so David tell us about yourself your background your uh, career journey to be a product marketing manager and how you see this is being evolved so off to you Yasin thanks for uh, inviting me here happy to be with you um, my journey into the product marketing manager role has it's been kind of a long and circuitous uh, type of journey. I, I actually have a uh, theater background, an acting background, and, and I got my start in technology as, as being a guy who uh, trains customers on how to use a phone system. And from that, I, I got to, to where I was actually listening to the, the customers who were coming into my classroom there and helping them understand, first of all, finding out what it was they needed their phone system to do for them, and then helping them understand how that phone system could help them communicate better with their organization, better with their customers and the different people that were their constituents in that role. And then as things progressed, I got I went from being a customer trainer to a system administrator trainer and helping those people, whether that was in the contact center, or call centers, as it was called back then, or um, system administrator for the phone system itself. And from that point, I went into being a systems designer. And then I went from there to being really a systems engineer, helping the customers um, deploy their systems in a way and, and really dissecting what would, would serve their business best. And from all of that, I figured that, you know, what I really wanted to know what was missing for me was how did we get to this point? What was the messaging behind the solution that the customer was buying? Because it seemed to me there might have been a disconnect and things could have been a little better in the background there. And so that's why I got into marketing is to help tell those stories and help really articulate a better uh, message to the customer so that they could understand up front what the solution was that they were looking at and, and how it would be able to benefit their business going forward. That's kind of the, the nutshell of my journey. Thanks. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, a lot of people like myself, you know, who graduated from an engineering you know, university, they had never really thought about this entire end-to-end -end process, right? You know, that you just articulated very well. And we take it for granted, you know, whatever product we're using is just being, you know, manufactured design, and then we just bought it from the manufacturer. But there's a there's a lot behind it. Um, and, and of course, marketing is, is a major part of it. Um, so how do you define a product marketing manager role? Um, Oftentimes people get confused. Is it marketing just like another marketing role or is it a product management role? Like what's the difference between uh, these three? Yeah, so a product marketing manager really in a nutshell, their objective is to really, they're the person who determines what are the most marketable features about this product? Where's this product? going to help my customer, my end user, um, move forward in their business and, and get their objectives you know, resolved quickly and better than anybody else can do it. And so you really have to understand, how is this being done today? What are the alternative options that the customer has? And what is it about your product that is better than those alternatives that's gonna make it shine and really execute better or flawlessly for your customer? in that particular, you know, function that it's, it's trying to resolve, right? You, you always want your product to solve a problem and you want to be able to solve that problem better, faster, funnier, you know, um, than the competition, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, so 
there is, I think there is a fine line between a product manager and a product marketing manager, right? So if I understand product manager, product manager is basically the one who owns the roadmap and who basically deliver uh, the features that are committed by the engineering team, right? And I think the PMM or product marketing manager is the marketing or field facing role for that product manager. Did I? I mean, I don't know if I would call it field facing more. Both are going to be facing the field, but the, the product manager really owns defining the product. These are all the functions that I need to add to my product based on what I understand about the market, what my product's been doing up to this point, what my customers have been asking for, and where I see the market going. The product marketing manager, on the other hand, takes that product and develops the messaging behind that product to help the customers understand why they should buy it. So the, the product marketing manager is really trying to push that message out to market in a way that's going to capture the attention of the audience. And first of all, you have to know who that audience is, right? And then and then really execute on, you know, what why this this product is the best choice for those customers to choose to, to solve those problems or, or you know address those needs that they have got it got it so as you mentioned you know you need to find out who's your audience right as part of this whole journey um, I know it's gonna be a very long answer question but tell us about at the high level what is the journey in terms of you know when you start you know, building a product, of course, you have to do some research and think about the use cases and business, um, you know, business use case of that product. From that point onwards to the, to the point when you launch the product, like what's the high level journey? Um, yeah, so, I mean, a lot of that is going to be different depending on the nature of the product. If you're introducing a brand new product category, something that hasn't been done before, uh, you really need to understand what it is about the problem that you're solving. So, so in order to come up with a product, you really have to dissect what that problem is, understand who has that problem, where is, where is that manifesting itself, um, what are the attributes that need to be in place in order to solve that problem, and then you look at what the alternatives are. So these problems have existed. There have been ways that people have been addressing that up until now. How is what you're doing going to revolutionize the way they're going to be able to address it going forward? And then you start to be able to roll back and uncover what it is about this product. What are the attributes, characteristics, functionality that are built into this product that are really going to transform the use model or, you know, address the, the issue that the, the customer is having uh, for that particular topic. And so then what you do is you figure out, okay, so where does this, who, who's got this issue? Where does it manifest itself? What are their roles? What's the persona look like of the people who are going to buy this? You, have, you really have to focus on the buyer because that's the person who's going to make the, you know, the purchasing decision. And you also have to understand the user. So you put things in perspective of the buyer for the user. And that's the story you have to be able to tell is, is how this is going to transform the business life of these people who are going to be your end users. And at some point in there, you got to take uh, into, into consideration the, the financial person. You know, you've got the buyer who may be, in, in our case, you know, it's an IT person. Uh, you know, CIO, uh, technical, technical executive, but the financial person is going to come into this conversation as well, right? Because in a lot of cases, when, especially when you're dealing with big iron type functionality or what used to be big iron, where you're selling big systems to people, um, there's a lot of finance and a lot of uh, capitalization involved. And so the finance the financial buyer has to be taken into consideration to this as well. So you look at the different perspectives of your buying audience and your influencers, and you break down the personas of how you're going to solve the issues that they are looking to address better than what anybody else is doing. Interesting, interesting. <clears throat> so as you explained to us, this is a very 
cross-functional role, right? So you have to work with a lot of different teams yeah. um, and, and, and have to bring everybody on the same table to kind of drive the consensus. Um, do you see any friction between these multiple teams, like when you try to bring everybody on the table and, and drive the agenda, especially like sales or, or marketing? Um, so, yeah, interesting question. So the product marketing manager's best friend needs to be the product manager. Uh, probably the second best friend needs to be the sales or sales engineers, depending on the nature of your uh, product. And you, you really need to, to, to understand what these people, what their objectives are and what their needs are. At the end of the day, there shouldn't be any friction. We're all on the same team. We all have the same big goals and big objectives, right? Um, but we have a different way of getting there. And with anything human, you're always gonna run into personality issues and egos and you know timing and whatever. There, there are certainly opportunities for friction to develop. What you have to be is just uh, not take things too personally. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you know, we're all on this together. We want the same thing. How can we work together to make this happen? And so somebody has to be the adult in the room and, and figure out <laughs> where the challenge is and how do we overcome this challenge? So yeah. Yeah. yeah outside the personal challenges, um, what I was trying to ask was, is there any situation where sales think, hey, this feature is the most wanted feature from the field and we would like to deliver this. But you as a product marketing manager would think, oh, this may not align with the vision or strategy of the product. Like how how do you that, deal with that kind of restriction? Yeah, that is usually not a, a challenge that comes up with a product marketing manager. That may come up with a product manager. That's where you're gonna see that in the sense that the, the sales department uh, sees customers wanting feature X. And so the product manager needs to say, yeah, I, I absolutely agree, or uh, I agree and here's the problem, here's the issue, budgeting, what have you, or I think you're off base because the market is moving in this direction and here's why. Um, so, so that could see itself uh, manifesting in, in those different directions, but it wouldn't really hit a product marketing manager typically. Okay. and. Um... If I want to ask, like, who are your top three stakeholders in this whole process? How would you define them or, or rank them? Yeah, um, well, clearly our executive team is a, is a top stakeholder. They're the ones that uh, fit in the bill, uh, funding the marketing team and, and making things uh, happen in that way. So we have to really sell them on what we're doing and why what we're doing is important and, and have a you know a, a conversation a st strategic alignment there as to what are the business objectives and how we're going to get there um the customer huge you know constituent here you know what are we giving to the customer in order to um, make this all you know make their lives better and then the 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 product team themselves, the business unit, the product managers, that that organization, those those are probably the three key stakeholders. And of course, we're dealing with the education uh, department. We're dealing with, uh, we have external constituents in the sense of outside vendors that we're dealing with on a regular basis. Um, people who are maybe their marketing, you know, firms that are doing graphics for us or video production teams that are producing our videos for us, that type of stuff. Um, analysts, uh, if, if we're in a technology area like, like you and I are, um, analysts are very major influencers in our market. And so our customers aren't even going to know we exist if we're not in the analysts, you know, radar and front and center and their leaders uh, definition of whatever they define as the leaders in your particular product area. So you need to know who the top analyst groups are within your technology and make sure that they understand uh, what you're doing, what your strategy is and why your solutions are better than competitors. Yeah, which is kind of a role of a PR, right? So the PR team 
is basically work with the external, um, you know, as you mentioned, people who have a lot of influence in the market. Um, so, um, in terms of uh, go-to-market strategy, like now things have evolved from what we used to see back then, ten years ago. Like there's so much social media influence on the product, you have to be, you know, in the uh, high-ranking keywords when somebody searches about a particular technology. Like, how, how do you see the go-to-market strategy for a product being defined um, in your current role, for example? Yeah, I mean, go-to-market strategy, there are fundamentals that are the fundamentals and they, they may have nuance of change, but they're, they're largely the same. I mean, you have your channels that you, you need to make sure your channels are aware of your product, why your product is better, have access to it, um, have the training that they need to, you know, be able to, um, you know, sell your product effectively. At, at the end of the day, your channel is your most, in, in our case anyway, your channel is the most important constituent there from a the standpoint of they are the ones that decide whether or not your product even gets presented to their customers. So if they're not happy or they're not in, in the know and, and just flat out excited about your product, you got a major problem. So the, the channel needs to be first and foremost a, a part of your, your go-to-market strategy and, and helping them have everything they need to be successful. So training materials, marketing materials, um, uh, background resources, whether that's videos, demo videos, um, you know, videos that illustrate the, the purpose of the product, um, additional documentation. So I, I get involved with writing a lot of, you know, data sheets and um, presentations that, that are getting, getting presented in different stages of the sales cycle to, to buyers, to technical audiences, etc. So we have all these different pieces of documentation that we need to bring together so that when that product is launched, there is actually a library of content available to all the participating players, whether that's your internal sales, your channels, whatever, um, you know, analysts and what have you. Everybody has the access to the content so that they know from their standpoint what it is about this product that matters. And all of those different audiences that I described have a different point of view. So you have to be able to adapt the content to serve the needs, the interests of those different points of view. Mm -hmm. Interesting, interesting. And um, thanks for that, actually. It was very, very insightful. Um, what are the best practices uh, for a PMM? To think about, like if I if I want to hire a PMM, like what are the best traits that I'll be looking for, you know, in in a, in a candidate to be to be my PMM? Well, first of all, you want a storyteller. At the end of the day, that's what your PMM is. Your product marketing manager is your storyteller, your evangelist, your the person who's going to get your market excited about your product or service. And so they, they've got to be a great storyteller. It's got to bubble out of them. Um, they've got to be an attentive listener. And that's important. Because, I mean, if, if you just think about my story arc that I told you there, it, it all started because I was a listener, a good listener. I was listening to my audience, what it was they need. When, when I say you want to be an attentive listener, you have to understand what your audience wants. What do they need? Um, you have to recognize where they're coming from. What do they think? What do they believe? And how are they feeling about your product, about their needs? And how can you get into that conversation that's going on between those ears there to influence what they think, what they believe, and, and how they feel about your product as addressing their need? Ultimately, it all comes back to their need. And, and part of the challenge that, you know, a lot of people run into, they're not good listeners because they don't care. You have to care. 
you have yeah. to get outside right. of yourself and, and care about somebody else before you're going to listen to them, right? So that's, Very that's yeah. yeah. Um, they, they've got to be an engaging writer, you know, so you look at the content that they write because they're going to be putting out a lot of content for you. So do they, are they engaging? And do I read their stuff and it's really dry? Do I read their stuff and, and I think I kind of understand, but I'm not sure. You, you want it to be clear, exciting. And, you know, I want that. When you finish reading something, you, you want that sense of, wow, yeah. I get some of that, whatever. The factor. Yeah. They've got to have an analytical mind. And what I mean by that is there's a lot going on in the market, regardless of what your product set is, and it's changing quickly. And so a product marketing manager needs to be able to interpret, first of all, know how to collect data and, and what the, the data points are that matter versus the ones that are noise, because there's lots of noise out there, right? But then you need to be able to interpret that and you know, suss it down as to what are the actionable steps that I can and should take in order to address the changes and, and what's going on here. Um, so those are some of the things that uh, bubble up immediately. I, I think they, they need to be a, an entertainer at heart because at the end yeah. of the day, your product marketing manager needs to capture and hold your audience's attention. And if they're not an entertainer at some level, how are they going to do that? You know? Absolutely, very important. I think, to, to some extent, all of these traits apply in sales as well. Like you know, you are you are the one selling this product to the to the customers. So you have to be storyteller. You have to be entertaining. You have to be engaging the audience. Um, so we also look for these kind of traits when we hire sales engineers, for example, um, in in our teams. So thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for that. Um, Lastly, I want to understand, or I would like to take your advice <clears throat> in terms of guiding the new engineers or young, early in career engineers who are still in the university or college, or maybe in their first or three years of their first job. Um, what do they, what do they do in terms of pursuing their career in product marketing manager, especially a person who is coming up with the majors in, let's say, electronics or IT uh, engineering. Um, what do they do in terms of evolving their career to pursue uh, a product marketing manager role? Because there is no certification exists right today to be a product marketing manager. Um, so how do we how do we build those skills? Yeah. So my, my first comment would be, you know, you're going to have a career that is going to be a journey, and you are going to start in some role or some place and you are going to move and evolve and grow and develop over the course of your career and so i would say build on your strengths recognize your weaknesses work on the weaknesses that are most important to you to correct and pick them off one at a time and you know work on these things and develop those things so that as time unfolds for you opportunities will open up for you in a lot of different ways um, to be a product marketing manager successfully you go back to you know what i said earlier there are you a storyteller do you like telling stories um, if not product marketing managers probably not the pl best place for you to go. But if you're really just that kind of a person, then absolutely, it's, it's a possibility at some point in your career. Um, then, then you have to ask, ask yourself, am I a good writer? Um, develop those writing skills. Am I a good listener? I think if you're a good storyteller, you're probably a good listener, but that doesn't necessarily equate. I mean, as I say that, you know, it sounds like those are contra, contradictory terms, but you know, not really. If you're going to be a good storyteller, you have to be paying attention in order to pull in all of those details in order to tell your story effectively. Otherwise, it's just about you and it's not really a good story. It's a monologue, right? Yeah. Um, so, so that's, I think that's where I would go from is just really what, what are you passionate about? What, what gets you excited and 
go in that direction and, and find something where there's an opportunity to use your strengths. And from your standpoint, keep working on making your weaknesses your next layer of strengths as you progress. You know, there, there are going to be lots of, you, you can't be great at everything. It's just not possible. So recognize what you're really good at, recognize what you're not so good at. Some of those things that you're not so good at, you'd like to be good at, pick them off and bring them over into this other list, right? And as you progress yeah. and you look over that in time, you'll say, wow, that really is different. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with where I'm going. Definitely, it takes it takes time to build your career, right? Especially when you are uh, when you're young and then you are energetic and then you're you just came out of college, and it takes a lot of time and and, and experience to build uh, your expertise and polish them. Um, but as you said, you know there are basic traits that you have to be looking at, right? Storytelling, good writer, good reader, good listener. If you have these traits, then it's easy for you to pivot your career into. A product marketing manager right otherwise you have to work on it and then uh, it's not impossible but it will take some time to build up those skills right absolutely and always be curious always be interested always be learning right you know because the, the day you stop learning is probably the day you die um you know, whether that's physical or you know just mental you know totally agree yeah absolutely um I think that's all of my questions, David. Um, is there anything that you want to share as a closing thought? Uh, no, I think we covered it. Um, I'm, I hope I gave you what you were looking for. And uh, you know, as, as a young engineer or young person starting off in your career, I know just, just look forward to what your next step is going to be. How can you make a difference? How can you contribute? How can you make people's lives better? As long as you're focusing on that, you're heading in the right direction and, and somebody will, will want to bring you onto their team. They'll be, they'll be happy that they did. Absolutely. Excellent. Um, the last thing I want to say here is for the audience, this podcast is recorded on Cisco WebEx platform. So we use it every day in our job. You know, that's, that's how we interact with our colleagues and external participants. So I use Cisco headset. Uh, this is DX80, my Cisco video conferencing unit and uh, the world best technology that we use for our day jobs. So thank you very much, David. I really appreciate your time and your experience and you shared a lot of stuff with us. I'm hopeful that this will be very helpful for all the audience and engineers who are going to watch this and definitely will help them to build their career. Thanks a lot. Keep on WebExing, Yasin. Great to see you.